All right. Hi, I'm Mackenzie Bernhard. I'm coming from EconWord Tech. Um, we're a global technology company originated in Madrid, Spain. Um, we started out in 2009, and that is where all of our R&D took place. We've been doing tons of research and development on thermal hydrolysis since then, and just re recently started commercializing our technology last year. Um, so this is very new. Been ha we've had 15 years of research going on, and it is still ongoing. It's our largest department. Um, we currently hold five patents, and we have multiple pending as well on this technology for separating organics out of solid waste. So our values that we really hold as a company are making sure that we have a triple impact approach, which goes for environmental, economic, and social. So that includes all of the regulatory um, issues going on, as well as making sure that everyone involved in this process is still making money. It's economic, obviously. That's the whole point of why a lot of us do this, is for the business, um, while still being environmentally friendly and preserving our landfills um, from all the organic waste that's going in. Uh, with that being said, what we do have is a thermal hydrolysis system. It's a four-part part autoclave system. And for those of you that might not know what thermal hydrolysis is, it's essentially a pressure cooker. So it's going to take in all of your municipal solid waste, source separated organics, single stream, all into one autoclaving system, and it's going to cook it. So if you think about if you're cooking chicken or anything in like a crock pot or pressure cooker, the meat falls off the bone a lot nicer once it's fully cooked. Um, same thing going said for once you're eating food, you'd rather have cooked meat, cooked pasta, cooked anything versus eating anything raw that needs to be cooked to kill all the pathogens and all of those types of things that might upset your stomach. Um, so by doing this, it gives it more optimal feedstock for anaerobic digestion as well because we do kill all those pathogens and we separate all the contamination like the plastic cans, the bottles, all of that um, throughout this process. Um, for those of you that are familiar with anaerobic digestion, there's four parts to it. There's hydrolysis, acetogenesis, acidogenesis, and methanogenesis. So this is essentially decoupling or separating the hydrolysis process from anaerobic digestion. Um, with that too, because anaerobic digestion is one continuous process, a lot of the times what's going in is not fully hydrolyzed. So this does that in itself while also being able to separate out all of the non-organic fraction. Um, so with hydrolysis, what happens is your carbs, uh, carbohydrates turn into sugars, fats into fatty acids, and proteins into amino acids. And those new um, like compounds, I guess, are a lot better for them producing gas and, and everything going forward. Um, this bottom little image, just kind of let me, this bottom little graphic kind of shows the inlet feedstocks going into our thermal hydrolysis system, which is just, I'll show you the autoclaves after, um, just injecting pressure and temperature into the system um, with steam. So there's not a ton of water, there's not a lot of energy usage that's going into it, and it goes through in 20 minutes, and then coming out with the homogeneous, fully hydrolyzed, pathogen-free biomass. So this is kind of what your process would look like a little bit. You'd put in, I know it's kind of probably hard to see, but this is like your MSW, your gross, raw waste, going through the autoclaving system, and it comes out looking almost like mulch. Um, depending on how pure you'd like your feedstock coming out, you can have it up between 90 to 99.9% .9 pure, going through other different types of separation afterwards, including sedimentation tanks, twisters, hydrocyclones, to, that way you have a pure biomass coming out. This is what the, oop, let me go back. This is what the thermal hydrolysis unit, the Biomac, looks like in our operating facility in Spain. Um, it takes in 8.8 .8 short tons per hour, which is about 70,000 tons per year. Um, you can use multiple of these pieces of equipment in series in order to increase your capacity for large municipalities or anything that might be receiving larger amounts of waste than just that. Um, it runs at uh, 305 degrees Fahrenheit and 58 PSI, so it's not anything crazy, and I know a big buzzword is PFAS. No, we do not take care of PFAS. If we did, we'd be melting our plastics too, which would then turn into some other harmful chemicals and issues. So whatever goes in comes right out. All of your plastics, cans, bottles, all come out clean. So if you're looking to separate those out afterwards, um, it's a super easy system going into it. Um, you can bail it, you can use, I know we had an AMP presentation earlier this week, use AI and separate all of those out. So whatever goes in comes out clean, and everything that goes in can be recycled or reused in some sort of aspect. Um, this is a video that I'm not sure why it's not playing. <laughs> Let's see. If you click on it, it might. Oh. 
Thank you. It's supposed to play automatically. Um, so this is just a process of how the waste goes through the system. Right now, all the waste is entering in through that top inlet chamber, and that's where the steam is injected uh, with high pressure and high pre temperature, like I said, 305 Fahrenheit and 58 PSI, before going into the reactor. These next two chambers, the um, reactor and transit chamber, are the two where all the chemical and physical degradation take place. So these are our patented, those are our babies, I guess. Like, they're our special autoclaves. Um, and so once it goes through there, it's just going with an ogre pushing it through. So that way everything that goes in all comes out. It's not all sitting and rotting at the bottom of it. Um, and then the last chamber is the outlet chamber, and that's where you go back to atmospheric pressure. And the steam is then recirculated throughout the system to help preserve your energy uses as well, while also maintaining. Um, oh, well, this is going a little quicker. Now this is the mechanical separation. This is the vibrating um, screen that it'll go through that'll separate out from those cans, bottles, plastics, and as you can see, they all are still intact. I know this is just a graphic. They just might be a little bit crushed, but nothing will be broken. Nothing is gonna be melting at these temperatures and pressures um, before being separated out with the vibrating screen, the flip flow. From there, that depending on the size of the holes in this vibrating screen, you'll get about 94% purity, and you're only losing out on about 3% of your organics. If you're looking to get more pure than that and have none of those like little microplastics, broken glass, sand, and grit. We then have different systems like a sedimentation tank, twister, hydrocyclone that I know I mentioned before that can go through there as well in order to have um, a more optimal feedstock if you are going to anaerobic digestion. Oop, now it wants to play for me. <laughs> I was like, now it's going. Um, like I said before, um, this is just like a very simple um, process flow. I have a little more in-depth one I'll go into in a minute. That's just talking about your organic content loss. Obviously, if you want more pure organics, you're going to lose more organics in the long run, some of those like larger pieces and stuff. Um, but what you will notice, too, is that whatever goes in all comes out looking the exact same. You can put in an apple, you can put in paper, cardboard, chicken, any of pasta, and it all comes out looking like mulch, which is huge, um, especially going into different systems afterwards. What you may notice, too, is the organic matter in the waste. This is just an example of 77.3%, which is obviously very high organic matter. This is more of like an SSO type of example. Um, when it goes through thermal hydrolysis, it does come out with a higher organic matter, and that is just because of the hydrolysis. It is getting a little bit of water in there. However, the biomass coming out is not wet. It's just, it's kind of like mulch, like I had said. It's like a little damp, but it's not wet by any means. It's not any heavier or adding anything crazy to the system. Then after that post-treatment is where you'll lose some of your organics, depending on how you want, how pure you want it, before going on to a substrate that's up to 98.2% pure. This is our little bit of a better process flow. In this red box right here is our know-how. So this is our Econ Ward's specialty, I guess you could say. So what this is just saying is waste going in, we'll go through that mechanical pre-treatment, which I hadn't talked about. It's just a magnetic separator to get out any needles, nails, um, any other little metals that might be found in the garbage. Then we're going into the thermal hydrolysis, which is our biomac, the four autoclave system, and then goes through the mechanical post-treatment, which is then the sedimentation tank twister, flip flow, um, before going on to AD. Um, like I had said before, for this case, recycling, obviously you want those cans, you want the bottles, you want anything that was in the trash to be diverted. So all of those are now clean. All the yogurt is out of the yogurt container. All of the Bottles are now empty because they've been smushed and all the contents have came out. Um, so it's a lot easier to be able to recycle some of these products that might have otherwise been going to landfills. Um, from there, then, there's different treatments you can go into with the biogas as well as solid liquid separation going into a digest state. Depending on what the contents of the waste are, it's up to Class A certified for land application digest state because we do kill all of the pathogens. This is another graphic kind of demonstrating the same thing as the process flow, but it's a little bit more of what the landfill of the future could look like when integrating the biomac into the system. So what's important to note is the biomac, this right here in the middle, number three, is the heart of the system that kind of keeps everything flowing properly. Um, just generally walking through, you'll have all of these slides. You can actually read the little notes from it. But um, step one is the waste would be collected into the landfill like you would typically see, except it would go into this receiving pit here. This is where the pretreatment would take place, um, and that's like all the separation. If you have big engines, anything, large computers, it'll go through a trommel or a shredder to get rid of some of those larger pieces that obviously aren't organic in the first place, so you don't need to hydrolyze or go through any separation processes with them. 
After that, it'll go through the Biomax system, as we had demonstrated before, before then going on to either anaerobic digestion or having um, the non-organic fraction be separated out, like I had mentioned before, and then going on to um, like RNG, CHP, any sort of upgrading to be used for renewable energy. Um, the digestate output, like I mentioned before, is also Class A certified for land application. This is another image, just um, a, more, a better rendering, less of a graphic of what this plant could look like. Same thing, going through with the receiving pits, going through to the Biomac hydrolysis system, and then um, going into all the digesters, decanters, and biogas upgrading and such. This is just another version of it. This is what we have currently in Spain. So we don't have the, I'm not, I'm not gonna try to sell anybody a digester, we do have partners, but we do the thermal hydrolysis process and that's our know-how. So in Spain, if anyone's planning on going to Madrid soon, I will be there next month. Happy to show you all around. Um, this is what we have going on with our receiving pits, our Biomax, and then we send it off to um, other digesters and plants and different separations that we have partnerships with, but just because we have a demo facility, a full industrial scale demo facility, um, we don't man the digesters and stuff on site. So this is just another graphic showing that. And then for when you guys have access to these slides, there's a ton of videos that are really helpful and show um, better demonstrations. They're usually around five to seven minutes though, so I wasn't gonna use all the time to show all of them today. But I do highly advise you to look through them. They're awesome. They give you a better demonstration of the entire process with actual um, images and videos going through the system. Some of them are even videos of me and my manager walking through the plant, so they're very user-friendly. I'm pointing at things within it and stuff. Um, and others of them just kind of show the process a little bit more in depth. But yeah, that's it.